Okay. Hi all, um, I'm Federica Bogo. The work I'm going to present is Dynamic Faust, Registering Human Bodies in Motion. So the problem of capturing and modeling bodies in motion is important for many tasks in computer vision. For example, for tracking or for learning how to classify motions. Attempts to address this problem date back to the 19th century, when human performances can be captured just as sequences of 2D images, as we can see here. But we live in a world of 3D shape, so gradually technology improved, and nowadays we have devices able to reconstruct 3D surface or scans in motion at a high frame rate. These scans, however, are just collection of an ordered point um, without correspondence between them. To exploit this data, we need to register it. Registration is commonly performed by taking a common template, here in green, on the right, and aligning it to each scan in the sequence, so that all the scans are registered to a, share, to a shared topology. We call this aligned template registration. Once we have data in correspondence, we can use it for learning statistics, um, train deep learning method, or to develop and evaluate registration technique. In general, for this, having registered real data is better than just synthetic data because it can better uh, capture the non-rigid articulated motion of the body. So we identified these requirements for many computer vision applications today. Having large amounts of real 3D shape captured in motion, precisely registered, that is with ground truth correspondence. So do we already have something like this? Uh, for example, we have the Faust dataset. Faust collects real scans of human bodies with ground truth correspondence. However, here we have only static poses and only 300 scans plus 100 ground truth registrations. Much more data is provided by Dyna, which is a data set built to learn a model of soft tissue deformations. Dyna collects um, more than 40,000 3D meshes obtained by registering sequences of 3D scans. However, their accuracy is not evaluated in any way, so we cannot trust them as ground truth. And furthermore, Dyna provides um, the registration used to train the model, but not the original data. So we try to combine the positive aspect of Faust and Dyna and propose Dynamic Faust, which is a data set collecting more than 40,000 scans of human bodies in motion, the same sequences and subject as in Dyna, with automatically computed ground truth correspondence. So how did we build uh, the data set? We consider the same sequences as in Dyna, and they were captured with a uh, multi-camera active stereo system, which give us textured 3D full body scans at 60 frames per second. The capture of color and geometry is not synchronous. In particular, given a frame at time t, we first have 22 pairs of stereo cameras shooting to capture geometry. To avoid interference with the speckled pattern projected in this stage, we have 22 color cameras shooting with a delay of 4 milliseconds. And the cycle repeats every 16 milliseconds. Dyna performances were captured after applying this high frequency texture pattern on the skin of the subject, which is well visible here. This information was not used in Dyna, and we use it here to evaluate the accuracy of this registration. To do this, we compute a texture map from each registration in Dyna. What is a texture map? Very briefly, you can think of it as a parameterization in 2D, here on the right, of the 3D registration template. Given this, we can project our 3D <coughs> surface onto different images for one frame and obtain, in this way, a compact representation in 2D of the color or appearance of the surface of the body. Now, let's take a texture map for a given frame in Dyna, zoom, a, zoom in on a single patch, and then on a pixel in this texture map. This pixel corresponds to a precise surface point, so it should always store the same color, no matter which frame we are considering here. But if we pick a different frame, we see we have a different color um, for that pixel. This means inaccurate correspondence. If we do this, not only between two frames, but for example, for all the frames in a sequence, this is the result uh, we get. There is a lot of motion in the texture map, and this is in general true for all the subjects and sequences in Dyna. Th this motion means uh, we have a lot of misalignment in our registrations. So how can we solve this? 
One solution uh, would be to try appearance-based registration, as in Faust, where a texture body model was fit to geometry and color data to refine an initial set of geometry-based registration. This was using gradient-based optimization. Here, however, misalignments are too large, so we are not able to correct this optimization just guess tax in local minima. Instead, we propose a two-stage approach. So in stage one, we try to reduce misalignment and get a better initialization by computing a set of correspondence or matches in 2D between texture maps and then mapping them to 3D. In the second stage, we refine our result by performing appearance-based registration using a body model. So now let's look at stage one in more detail. We saw before the problem of misalignment in texture space. So given two texture maps, we can try to align them by computing correspondence between their pixel. For this, uh, we use an approach already proposed, that is deep matching, that allows us to compute pretty dense match between two images, in this case, between two texture maps. Now, we don't want to establish correspondence only between two maps, but between all the maps for a subject. So what we do, we take, a, uh, we compute a reference texture map, a bar here on the left, just computed from an arbitrary frame for that subject, and given a sequence to a line here on the right, possibly different, we compute matches between our reference and all the maps in that sequence. We call these long-range matches. Now, this information is in 2D, and in the end, we want correspondence in 3D. So we can exploit the fact that we have this mapping between texture map pixel and 3D surface point. So from 2D matches, we compute a set of displacement in 3D, the X here, in orange. Um, they are dense, because the original matches in 2D were pretty dense. So we average them per vertex and use them to optimize a final set of per vertex displacement FT. To optimize FT, we simply enforce it to be similar to the match-based displacement DT uh, we just computed and to change smoothly over neighboring vertices. Now, optimizing FT in this way has one problem. Uh, we are computing these matches between frames that might be far apart in time, even belonging to different sequences. So they might be inaccurate, for example, in the presence of body self-occlusions or cast shadows. Ideally, we could mitigate this if we were able to better track the motion over a sequence here on the right. To do this, we compute an additional set of matches between subsequent frame uh, here in blue that we call short-term matches. As before, from this, we can compute the corresponding set of 3D displacement, here D tilde, and add this match base error term to our objective. Optimizing FT, so the set of perverted displacement to be applied to the mesh, we obtain a set of match base rectified registration. Now, could we stop here? Well, we can improve, in general, our results because first, if you remember, we have this um, asynchrony between geometry and color capture, and we are not, not exploiting this here. Second, we know that we are dealing with human bodies, so we can use a better regularization than just the smoothness term we were using before. So what we do is we take our uh, match base registration, and we use them to compute an appearance model by simply averaging texture maps from multiple frames and a shape model. Uh, for this, we use the simple body model, which is called available online. We then feed this model to um, geometry and color data in each frame. Given a frame at time t, we optimize our registration, VG here in purple, uh, by penalizing distance in 3D between scan and registration surface. Color is not um, in synchrony with geometry, so we optimize another registration, VC, by texture in our model, projected on camera space, and penalizing discrepancy between real images and synthetic images random from the model. Here we are not modeling the relationship uh, we have between BG and VC, so uh, BG will not benefit from having color information, and similarly, VC will not benefit from having geometry information. We therefore couple the two, enforcing a constant velocity model. To sum up, in our appearance-based registration, we optimize two registration per frame by minimizing an objective given by the sum of uh, four error terms, the three we just described, plus a regularization over the model parameters. 
what changes after this? Um, after appearance-based registration, we are able to correct artifacts that were present in mesh-based registration. And we are also able to capture uh, fine shape details, for example, facial expressions. From a quantitative point of view, we evaluated our registration in terms of geometric error, photometric error, and motion consistency, and found that more than 82% of all scan vertices, so out of billion of vertices, are registered with an accuracy within two millimeters, which we can consider ground truth. From a qualitative point of view, we can compare real images, here shown on the, light, on the left, and right images, um, sorry, synthetic images shown in the right, and we see that they look pretty similar. Also, if, as at the beginning, um, we look at misalignment in texture space, we see that after applying our method, texture map get much more stable. And we can see this for, in general, different subjects um, and sequences in Dyna. Uh, purple is the dynamic faust result, pink uh, Dyna result. This means, in general, we are getting much more accurate uh, correspondence. So to sum up, I presented Dynamic Faust, which is a dataset collecting more than 40,000 scans of bodies in motion with ground truth registrations. To develop the dataset, we propose a novel 4D registration technique that uses color and geometry information. Uh, scans and registration are available for research purposes on our website. Thank you. Any question? Okay, yeah, I have a question. Yeah, uh, as you mentioned in your model, you have two different, okay, constraints. Geometry, color, velocity, and also model. Yeah, how did you uh, balance the four parts? Yeah, as maybe, okay, you need to uh, determine different weights for these four parts, right? Uh, how do you define the weights? Yeah, uh, you mean for the appearance-based registration part? Yeah, yeah you, you, your yeah, model. In general, uh, we are pretty confident. We um, you assign higher weights to the data term, so color and geometry play the biggest part. While we um, basically the constraint on velocity is pretty soft to allow to fit better the data, and as well the regularization over the model parameters has a lower weight in our case. Any question? Okay.